Okay, listen closely here. We talked about that offspring and the connection that these locusts are having now to what people deem the Nephilim of Genesis 6. Okay, and I've got some other scripture that's going to absolutely support me in an incredible way that I'm going to bring to you still. Just hold on. When you hear what I'm about to share with you now, I don't want any of you to leave. I don't want any of you to go. I want you to maintain your search for the truth and let me show you some things. And these things are going to be a little astounding and they might even be disturbing to some of you because you have probably not heard anything like this in your life. But if you keep hearing me out, you will see, okay, and you will begin to understand. So just know that there are what we're talking about is history okay that's all it is it's history but the history has been chopped and rearranged and it's been muddled and it hasn't been interpreted correctly now I'm not telling you that the Bible is wrong nor am I telling you that the Bible is false I'm telling you the exact opposite that it is right and that it's true but the point is is that we have to see through the doctrine which is the false interpretation which is before our eyes like a veil so I want to provide the proof here before I even say it. And this is going to connect us to everything that I've been telling you about these locusts in the inner earth and who they are and what their plans are and who they're connected to, how this connects to Hitler and his search for the superior Aryan race. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to tell you right now is that Cain's father was not Adam. And we're talking the famous Cain and Abel of the Garden of Eden. All right. Cain's father was not Adam. And that is the reason why you find the story of Cain slaying his brother, who was Abel. Abel was Adam's son, but Cain was not. Okay, I know that's a little shocking, but here's the scripture to support. This is going to be 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. All right. First thing that we have to understand and declare matter of factly is that Adam was not wicked. And then when it says Cain, who was of that wicked one, well, there's the first entrance of understanding that takes place. So you now begin to understand how Cain, after slaying Abel, can go to this land and there he takes a wife. Well, how could he take a wife if Adam and Eve and Cain were the only ones on earth in that time? Well, don't give me the Apocrypha and that his sister and all that stuff, because that's not what it's saying here. It's telling you that it goes to the land of Nod at this time. And the land of Nod denotes ownership. And we're talking the Nodites. And the Nodites are directly connected to none other than the fallen sons of God of Genesis 6, who themselves took all the daughters of men of which they thought were fair and bore children to them. Cain is a product of one of those children that were born to the daughters of men. The only thing that you're missing in your understanding that they've hid from you in the fruit narrative of the apple in the garden is that Eve has bore Cain from another man. And that's exactly right. And that is what the fall of the garden is based upon. Not only the acceptance of the temptation of this fruit, of this way of doing things on earth that was going to be technologically advanced before the spiritual unfolding was to take place and to take the fruits of these people. And I'm going to show you without a doubt that it was a people and they were the Nodites. And that's exactly right. So when Genesis 6 says they took for themselves all the daughters of men, Eve is included in that equation. And then Cain is born unto Eve from a different father. That's the enmity. And this is why Cain goes on to slay Abel. Okay, because of the enmity between them of that fact. I'll be back.